Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson here, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast from javascript.info, the modern JavaScript tutorial, down to section 3.12, loops, while, and for. This is a very important lesson. If you've been following my playlist, I've taken you through some of the initial JavaScript lessons and then scooped you down part two, where we connect our JavaScript into our web page. I'm going to use all these skills and try to start putting this all together in this lesson. We use a loop anytime we want to repeat code. Loops and arrays are often listed in the same JavaScript chapter. If we have an array of a number of items, we often want to loop through each item in the array to do something to it. In our JavaScript, we've created a variable named accessories and we've assigned it to an array of one, two, three, four items. Now, as we go through these items, it's always important to know how many items we have. So on line five, I've put in a console log, accessories.length. We're gonna use the length property of the accessories array to find out how many items are in that array. I've created another variable called inventory, and it's pointing to the document, the web page, document.getElementById inventory. And then I've console logged out what inventory is, but I'll show you here in my HTML. The inventory is simply an unordered list with nothing in it. Let's look at this while loop. In each of the loops, we have a counter, a test, and an increment. So here's our counter. It's often called i, just because that's a nice short variable name. And we often start it with zero because the first index position for an array is position zero. So here's how the first loop looks. We use the JavaScript keyword while and then the test, just like in our if statement, is in parentheses, while i is less than accessories length. So i starts at zero, that's going to evaluate true. If that evaluates true, we do these four statements. And the four statements are create a new variable called new item and assign it to document.createElementLI. So now we've got an li element in our JavaScript environment. Then on that new item, variable, I'm going to set its text content property and assign it accessories i. Again, the first time through the loop, i is zero. So the text content for that new list item is going to come from the accessories array, position zero, which is kayak. My next statement appends the new item to the inventory element, which is that unordered list, and then we increment our i. So here's our test. Here's our increment. And I++, plus plus, if you remember, is the same as saying I. Now you're assigned to whatever you were plus one. Having a counter, having a test, and having that counter increment until the test turns false are common to all three of these loops that you'll learn in this lesson. So let's save that and refresh and see what happens. And I get kayak, paddle, seat, and trailer added to my web page in the unordered list. In my console, on line five, console logging out accessories length is four. In line seven, console log inventory, I get this unordered list that's showing me all the list items that I've added in my while loop. Let's comment out the while loop and do the same thing with the do loop. We have the counter, same counter. We're going to start it at position zero. We have the test, and then we have the increment. But notice that the test is in a much different position. So the basic difference between the do loop and the while loop is that the do loop does the statements at least once before the test happened. So if you want to make sure your statements run at least once before the test can turn false, use the do loop versus the while loop. Because back up in the while loop, the test was made first. If that first test was false, we would never get to these statements. In the do loop, we always run the statements at least once before we increment and before we do the test. And so oftentimes you can use one or the other, it doesn't really matter. I'll put in lures, save and refresh just to make sure that this do loop is running correctly as well. But sometimes it just makes more logical sense to use one versus another. And that decision is based on when do you want to do your test. Our third loop and probably the most common loop is the for loop. Now the for loop is very tidy in that it packs the initial value for the counter, the test, and the increment, all within the set of parentheses. So the three parts are separated by semicolons as if you're ending a statement. 
Now, given I've already declared I as a variable and assigned it to zero on line eight, I don't need to redo that on line 25. I could. I could say let I and assign it to zero or whatever number I wanted. But since it's already declared for my first argument, I can simply use the variable name I. And these three statements are exactly the same as they were in the do loop. Three statements that create the new item variable as a list item element and then use the accessories array values for the text content property and then append the new item to the inventory unordered list. Those three statements are the same. It's just that the pieces of information about how this loop is going to start, be tested, and incremented are in different positions in each. So while there are three different loops that often accomplish the same thing, your choice can be your personal preference or it can be based on what just makes most logical sense for that situation. I'm going to change my accessories array one more time. I'll put in fish finder here instead of trailer, save and refresh and make sure that my for loop runs as well. Thank you.